in case that you could see there is a flat surface after the canine and uh, as I told you or we could go and apply again in case that you have patient with high bite high uh, potentially I prefer to add this by two millimeters because in this case my uh, patient is Bruxer and as you see there is more space here and uh, my uh, bite splint is more uh, thick so it's not get Breaked easily. Okay, and one more thing. As I told you, I prefer the posterior parts to get flattened. Okay. And we have a static occlusion and we have dynamic occlusion. Let's try first a static occlusion. This is a static occlusion. As you can see, the indentations are made but these are not dynamic so I prefer to go for dynamic and let's see what's happened let's turn this off dynamic static dynamic static which one is your choice my choice is completely obvious dynamic of course dynamic the dynamic is far better in case that you made proper adjustments you will get good results with dynamic but dynamic you should be awarded you need soft surfaces so I'm going to do it once again and I need to have some canine ramp I prefer to canine and this part get a little bit more tissue because I want the canine to control the movements okay now we will get it a smooth every surface should be get a smooth because we should, the teeth shouldn't get catched in uh, okay I will get more small I hope time and okay it's good it looks perfect and we have canine ramp in case that you design your bite splint properly you don't need to uh, alter it in the two in the mouse. So thank you everybody. Today we designed a beautiful bite splints that help lots of patients to have better life and 
you learn how to design by the sprint, how to control the diameters, how to control the angles, how to add canine ramp, 